The Book of True Life, Teaching 11 of 366. The Master teaches, Every person is a lesson for other people. Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, O oh, humanity, seek your glory in the love of your heavenly Father. For truly, I say to you, the unity with God will enable you to feel the glory within your spirit. When man penetrates into the spiritual realm, he will finally find the path to glory. Marvel, O oh my disciples, knowing that within your spirit you can carry and feel that glory. I come once again to give you a lesson through my doctrine of love, for although I find you learning the teachings of life, which is school for you, you have not analyzed all that it has revealed to you along your path. Oh, my very beloved children, who weep like lost sheep, calling your shepherd with anguished cries. When you close your eyes to the reality of your surroundings, you end up thinking that I am the cause of your misfortunes on earth. Others believe that your vicissitudes are of no concern to me. How ungrateful you are thinking that way of your father, and how unjust thus to appraise my perfect justice. Do you believe that I do not listen to you when you say that you are only nourished by bitterness, that the world which you inhabit is a world without happiness, and that the existence which you lead has no reason to be? You only feel my presence when you believe that I punish you, that I deny you all mercy, and you forget the tenderness and kindness of your father. You complain about your life instead of blessing its benefits. The fact is, you close your eyes to the truth, and you only see bitterness and tears around you, reaching desperation because you believe that everything will be without a reward. How different your life would be if, instead of that non-conformity, of that incomprehension, your first thought each day would be to bless your father, and your first words to be thankful for so many benefits that his love offers. But you do not feel those virtues anymore, because the flesh has perturbed your spirit, and you have forgotten my teaching. That is why I come to speak to you about those feelings, which you have removed from your heart. Destiny has the compassion which God has put in it. The destiny of men is filled with the divine goodness. Many times you cannot find that goodness, for you do not know how to seek it. If within the destiny marked by me for each spirit, you devise a difficult and bitter course, I try to soften it, but never to increase its bitterness. In the world, men need one another. No one is extra and no one is missing. All lives are necessary, one to each other, for the complement and harmony of their existence. The poor need from the rich, and the rich from the poor. The sinful need from the righteous, and these from the former. The ignorant need from the wise, and those who have knowledge from the ignorant. The little ones need from the adults, and these in turn need from the children. In this world, each one of you is situated by the wisdom of God in his place, and near whom he should be. 
to each man is assigned the circle where he should dwell, in which there are incarnated and discarnated spirits, with whom he must coexist. Thus, each in his way, all of you are encountering those who will teach you the love which will elevate you. Others will receive sorrow which will purify you. Some will cause you to suffer because you need it thus, while others give you their love to compensate for your bitterness. But all have a message for you, a teaching which you should understand and profit from. Again I say to you, although you find yourselves before my teaching, you have not recognized the message that each being offers you. Seek in each of your brethren the good side that he presents, in order to learn from him, as well as his bad side, so that you will help him to elevate himself, and in that manner proceed along the pathway, helping one another. Slow down your pace and meditate, for you have allowed many to go past you who would have done you good. Do not allow these opportunities to pass, because they are lessons which you are wasting. Each human being is a lesson, a hope of love or lack of love, which will finally give you its pleasant or bitter truth. In that way, you will proceed from lesson to lesson, sometimes learning and sometimes teaching, because you must also deliver to your fellow men the message which you have brought to earth. In truth, I say to you, that if this humanity understood these teachings, it would not weep so much on earth. Do not forget that every incarnated and discarnated spirit who crosses your path in some way comes to help you in your destiny. How many spirits of light I have sent to the world, and you have not stopped to bless my love for you. Many spirits that I have sent to you, you have not taken advantage of, unaware that they formed part of your destiny. But since you were unable to receive them, you were left with empty hands, and later you had to weep. O oh humanity, your destiny is to harmonize with everything created. This harmony of which I speak is the greatest of all the laws, for in it you will find the perfect communion with God and his works. Study those spirits that surround you and those that cross your lives, in order that you value their virtues, receive the message which they bring for you, or give them what they should receive from you. Why have you neglected your fellow men, whom destiny has placed along your path? You have closed the door of your heart, unaware of the lesson which they brought to you. How many times you have cast aside the very one who brought a message of peace and hope for your spirit, and then you complain when you yourselves have filled your cup of bitterness. Life has unexpected changes and surprises, and what will you do if tomorrow you anxiously seek the one whom you arrogantly rejected today? Keep in mind that it is possible that he whom you reject and scorn today, tomorrow you will anxiously seek, but many times it will be too late. If you are children, understand and respect the generosity of your parents. If you are parents, know how to understand your children. If you are husband and wife, know and love one another. If you still are not, and you await the one who will be part of your destiny, be prepared to receive her in order to understand her.
Avoid creating greater bitterness with errors and trivial things. And since you have not learned to read in the Book of Life, at least read about the spiritual nobleness of those who are close to you. O oh humanity, understand my word, learn from me, and observe how I do not neglect those who approach me, knowing that all are my children, that all need from me. Learn this lesson in order to know how to be teachers, but first learn to be brothers. It is necessary for everyone to know that your destiny is to learn the great lessons of life, for only thus will you reach the summit of your perfection. Only in that way will you reach greatness. Otherwise, you will always carry nonconformity, complaints, incomprehension, blasphemy and reproach toward your father. Allow my teachings to be your advisor along the pathway, and you will feel within you a force which will never allow you to weaken and will guide you step by step toward the summit of understanding. Comfort those whom you see weeping. God has guided you to them, for there is your mission. Understand my lesson, so you will not make more mistakes during your lifetime. For any offense which you may cause your brethren, in word or deed, will be an unforgettable reminder in your conscience, which will reclaim relentlessly. Again I say to you, all of you are necessary for the fulfillment of the divine plan and for the end of so much spiritual misery among mankind. As long as egotism exists, suffering will also exist. Substitute your indifference, your egotism and your contempt for love, for charity, and you will realize how soon peace will come to you. Meditate carefully in all my teaching. Know yourselves. I have beheld the existence of mankind of all the eras, and I know what has been the cause of all its sufferings and misfortunes. Since the first times I have seen men taking their lives because of greed, materialism, and lust for power, they have always neglected their spirit, believing themselves only flesh, and when the time has come to leave their human form on earth, only what they did in their physical life remained, without gathering any glory for the spirit, because they did not seek it. They did not think about it, nor were they concerned with the virtues of the spirit or its knowledge. They were satisfied in living without seeking the pathway which leads them to God. You who do not love life because you regard it as cruel, as long as you do not recognize the importance of the conscience in man, or allow yourself to be guided by it, you will find nothing of real value. It is the conscience which elevates the spirit toward a superior life, above the flesh and its passions. Spirituality will enable you to feel a great love for God when you succeed in practicing it. Then you will understand the importance of life. You will contemplate its beauty and will find its wisdom. Then you will surely understand why I have called it life. After knowing and understanding this teaching, who will dare reject it, saying that it is not the truth? When you understand that within the conscience is your true value, you will live in harmony with everything created by your Father. Then the conscience will beautify the poor human life, but first it will be necessary for man to withdraw from all passions which separate him from God in order to follow the path of justice and wisdom. 
That will be the beginning of the true life for you. This life which today you regard with indifference, because you do not realize what you are despising, nor imagine its perfection. O oh humanity, you have remained at a standstill throughout the times, for you believed that happiness and true peace pertained to the human existence, without realizing that they form a part of the spiritual life, which is the true life. Seek those who love you and those who hate you. Love the life which you have regarded cruel without realizing that it is like an open book full of knowledge for you. Be moved by the joys as well as the afflictions of others. Behold in each human being a teacher and feel yourself a living symbol of good, not evil. For the symbol that you represent will be according to your deeds in life. Men have imagined hell as a place of eternal torture, where they believe that all those who have disobeyed my mandates will go. And in the same way, they have created a hell for great faults. They have imagined another place for lesser faults, as well as one more for those who have done neither right nor wrong. Those who say that in the hereafter there is neither rejoicing nor suffering are not telling the truth. No one is without suffering, nor exempt from rejoicing. Afflictions and joys will always be mixed as long as the spirit does not attain the supreme peace. Listen, O oh my people. Hell is within the incarnated and discarnated, in dwellers of this world and the spiritual realm. Hell is a symbol of great pain, of terrible remorse, of desperation, of suffering and bitterness of those who have sinned greatly. And from those consequences, they will be liberated according to the evolution of their spirit towards love. Glory, on the other hand, which symbolizes happiness and true peace, is for those who have withdrawn from earthly passions in order to live in communion with God. Question your conscience and you will know if you are living in hell, if you are atoning for your faults, or if you are vibrating with the peace of glory. What men call glory or hell are not predetermined places. It is the essence of your deeds which your spirit gathers when it reaches the spiritual realm. Each one lives his hell, inhabits his world of atonement, or enjoys the happiness which the elevation and harmony with the divine spirit offers. I am your father, and you are my very beloved people. Come, elevate yourselves above everything created and draw nearer to me. O oh, my beloved disciples, these are times of justice for mankind. The time is up for you to begin to settle your accounts. You are reaping the harvest of previous sowings, the result or consequence of your deeds. Man has a time to do his work, and another to answer for what he did. This last time is the one in which you live. For that reason, everyone suffers and weeps. In the same way that you have a time to sow and another to reap, God also has one which he granted you to comply with his law and another to manifest his justice. You are living in the phase of divine justice. Pain makes you weep. Humanity purifies itself through its own lamenting, because no one is exempt from restitution. These are times of justice in which you must meditate over your destiny, so that through meditation and spirituality you will listen to the voice of the conscience, which does not confuse nor deceive 
but it guides you along the path of peace. What is most difficult for the spirit is to reach spirituality through the flesh. The most difficulty for man is to know himself essentially. Do not waste your life. Learn all its lessons. Your mission is to acquire knowledge, to teach those who surround you, and to perfect yourselves in spirit. O oh my people, if you know that your spiritual destiny is great, take the path of love and kindle your lamp of faith within the divine flame of my wisdom. Come to me, O humanity, for I am your hope. I am the promised comforter who has brought to you, during these times of chaos, my message of peace. For all that you have wept and suffered, my consolation and my love are poured upon you like a fountain of mercy. Truly I say that you have greatly violated my law, but it is also true that in my love you will be purified. What would you do during this period if, instead of comforting you, I would come to you only as judge? I am the master of love who comes to help you with your cross. I am your traveling companion who guides your steps and accompanies you in your solitude and bitterness. I am your gentle friend, whom you awaited. I am the sustenance that your spirit demands, because my love is the nourishment which gives you life. At all times you have needed me, but more so during these in which humanity is draining its cup of grief. For that reason I am with you, because I am your savior. You weep and I bless your lamenting. For the tears of sinners are the blessed dew with which the hearts are fructified. Your spirit has taken leave of the flesh in order to hear my word in the hereafter, and it has spoken to me without words. The elevated spirit knows that the human word impoverishes and diminishes the expression of the spiritual thought. For that reason, it silences the lips of the flesh, in order to elevate and express itself with a language which only God understands, the secret which it has concealed within its innermost being. Overcome all pain. Elevate yourself above your lamenting and keep on listening to me. Recognize that the third era is here before mankind and feel the responsibility to be prepared. You confess yourselves before me and you elevate your spirit. I listen to your prayer and I allow you to attain my grace and forgiveness. You glorify me with spiritual hymns when you see me descending from the summit of the mount to your mansion, and upon hearing my word, your spirit is moved, and you say to me, Father, we know that you are with us. But not everyone has felt my coming, and it is necessary for my words and my evidence be repeated at every moment to make you understand that once again I have come before men. I have sought within the human being a home, a temple where I may dwell, and still I do not find it. However, I will continue to polish those rocks until I transform them into hearts that feel my presence, and with it my justice and my love. If you feel that you travel in a desert of incomprehension, be strong and proceed forward. But if, by my will, I make you cross deserts and mountains to spread the good news to other lands, arise and comply. For if water becomes scarce, I will make it sprout from rocks to quench your thirst. And if you lack strength for the long journey, I will vivify you. This work which I entrust to you is delicate. Do not allow profane hands to steal this treasure in order to say afterward 
that it is the fruit of their inspiration, and with it they will exalt themselves and humiliate the innocent. When you come before me, I will ask and demand all that I have given you, and many of you will say to me, Father, I have lost my heritage. Then I will send you to seek it, and you will not return to me until you have recovered it and have complied with all my mandates. If I did not speak to you in this manner, you would slumber and you would not be able to save yourselves. The essence of my word, which you preserve today, will emerge tomorrow from your lips in words of wisdom for mankind. If you persevere along this path, you will find in it sound and healthful enjoyments which will nourish your spirit. Have faith the size of a mustard seed, and you will see great miracles realized. I tell you as I did during the second era. Order a mountain to move, and you will be obeyed. Command the fury of the elements to cease, and you will see it realized. Ask in my name for a sick person to be healed, and he will be free of his ailment. But when a miracle has been granted to you, do not be indifferent. Perceive within your spirit the divine deeds, and know how to appraise them. Many calamities will come upon mankind. Within nature, there will be disturbances. The elements will be unleashed. Fire will devastate regions. The waters of the rivers will leave their course. The seas will undergo changes. There will be regions which will be buried under the waters, and new lands will appear. Many creatures will lose their lives, and even those beings inferior to man will perish. All will be disorder and confusion, and if you do not prepare yourselves from now on, you will weaken during those trials, and you will not be able to give strength to the rest, and thus you will not set a good example for the future generations who should communicate with me from spirit to spirit. If you do not prepare their way, they will seek me through the path of science and not through the path of spirituality, and that is not my will. After the year of 1950, you will see the beginning of those great trials. Be watchful and pray. Acknowledge me, O my people. Practice my word, which contains all virtue, and be saved. Truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and practices it will be saved and will penetrate eternal life. That temple which I announced to my disciples, which I would raise in three days, is this which today I am constructing within your spirit. This temple is indestructible. I entrusted its foundation to your parents, and your children will behold its completion. No one should profane this temple, nor permit idolatry, greed, egotism, and hypocrisy to penetrate it, because confusion and remorse will be the only reward they will gain from it. But if you are zealous of that inner sanctuary which you carry in your spirit, and which is the house where your father wishes to dwell, you will then behold the arrival from distant and nearby lands, caravans of men, women and children, who will come knocking at the doors of that mansion in demand of spiritual charity. Many will come like wolves, trying to surprise you. But before the purity and truth of your worship, and also your deeds, they will be converted into humble sheep. Penetrate into meditation, and allow me to interrogate you in the silence of your chamber. Those questions will be the same ones which men will come to ask you. And from now on, I wish to see you prepared in order that you give them the proper answer. At the same time that I have come to give you my teaching and my mandates, I have come to fill you with strength, so you will struggle without weakening. 
It is not possible, O oh my beloved children, for you to reach the summit of the mount carrying your cross without first traveling over that road of bitterness. When will there appear on earth a man who comes to comply with all my teachings, such as my law ordains? A man of great and illuminated spirit, of elevated sentiments and clear intelligence? If you believe that the word man signifies a weak and small creature, subject to allow himself to be pulled eternally by wickedness, you are in great error. Mankind has had its physical and spiritual crucible, so that the fruit of its struggle, its experience, and its evolution would be to become a true man. Do you believe that your seed is incapable of producing such a fruit? O oh, Israel, do not doubt my word. Remember that I promised Abraham and Jacob that their seed would be the blessing and consolation for all the people of the earth. My peace be with you.